Key Point 1 Lincoln's Opposition and Their Beliefs Abraham Lincoln was a prominent American politician and lawyer who served as the 16th President of the United States from 1861 until his assassination in 1865. He led the country during the Civil War and is remembered for his role in ending slavery. In 1860, Abraham Lincoln had to win over his main rivals, Edward Bates, Salmon Chase, and William Seward, to become President of the United States. According to Goodwin, Lincoln expressed utmost respect toward his opponents. He believed that Seward, a Republican, would be the best fit for the presidential role, and his certainty had some solid ground. The citizens loved the senator because of his great interest in their lives and willingness to help if problems arose. Even Democrats recognized his natural ability to be an advisor, leader, and admired politician. Both Democratic and Republican media ensured that the senator would probably be elected. Chase, the representative of Ohio, was described as an excellent salesman with an appearance equated to Herculean. His circle characterized him as a restrained man. Chase was a strong supporter of the anti-slavery movement. He based his argument that slavery was an immoral phenomenon on his Christian ethics and was considered a significant contribution to the Republican Party. He considered himself the most fitting person for the presidency, so confident in his goal, freedom for the enslaved people, that he didn't even start a political campaign. Bates appeared to be more family man than an ambitious politician. Citizens usually saw him and his wife wearing plain clothes, as they weren't the type of people who strove for immense success. In his diary, Bates wrote how happy he was to have great children and a loving wife, considering them blessings from God. Despite being a homely person, Bates was interested in the fate of Americans, and his core mission was to stop slavery from expanding. Stay tuned to understand which of Lincoln's qualities endeared him to many people. Learn how charisma and dedication form a great personality attractive to others. Being a great person includes treating your rivals with respect. Key Point 2 Managing the Pre-Electoral Campaign In 1860, Lincoln attempted to create a political reputation alluring to Americans. Notably, he didn't like using the word power in such cases. But Lincoln was a man of action. When people showed interest in the upcoming election, he demonstrated moderate excitement about his rivals. Only by observing his deeds could one conclude that Lincoln was determined to be elected, while his political supporters managed Seward's campaign masterfully. Lincoln worked for his name alone. Even when Jesse Fell, secretary of the Illinois Republican State Central Committee, wrote to him about possibly increasing his chances of election through mass media, the future president rejected any flattery and publicity. Researching Lincoln's life during the pre-electoral period, Goodwin highlighted specific mistakes made by his opponents. Seward's radicalism made his advisors think it would be better for him to begin his electoral campaign in Europe. They feared that Seward might say something uncompromising about slavery, and people wouldn't be ready to accept his opinion. So, he left America for his eight-month campaign tour. When he returned, he was a different person, milder and less radical. Many people liked his pre-election speech. His advisors, full of confidence about Seward's future victory, fell out with Horace Greeley, editor and writer of the New York Tribune. Greeley tried to sabotage Seward's campaign by supporting Bates, which resulted in the public's growing interest in the latter. Chase also had trouble with the written campaign. Instead of choosing a proper manager, he followed politician Hiram Barney and rejected many supporters from the press. Even though Chase played a significant role in the anti-slavery movement, he didn't pay enough attention to how he presented himself to the people. Self-confidence is useful until it distorts one's self-perception. As for Bates, Goodwin wrote that his devotion to family made him unfamiliar with the American mood. He was unaware of social polarization on the grounds of slavery and claimed that politicians should pay more attention to the country's economy than the slavery issue. Worse still, he assumed this question was too dangerous and would never result in anything good for any political party. 
The Republicans, who struggled for the enslaved people's freedom, were dissatisfied because such claims looked like a condemnation of the Republican Party. Key Point 3 Honorable Deeds After the Election The election took place in 1860 in Chicago. Seward and Lincoln were the most popular politicians supported by the citizens in the Republican Party. When Lincoln was elected, his rivals weren't surprised. They took the defeat honorably in public. However, Bates demonstrated disappointment in his journal. Rumors speculated that Lincoln's victory was due to trickery. Lincoln nobly accepted the news of his win. Bystanders claimed he was happy to hear their congratulations, but more interested in going home to tell his wife. Historians asked themselves how Lincoln managed to win. Despite the mistakes made by his rivals, there should have been more pieces to the puzzle. One reason was that Seward had as many enemies as friends, and his position was shakier than Lincoln's. A lesser-known politician. Nobody even considered taking him down. Another explanation was that he served as the middle ground in the Republican Party, not as conservative or radical as his rivals. He won the final election on November 6th of the same year. Having risen to power with fewer privileges than any of his rivals, Lincoln was more accustomed to rely upon himself to shape events. Doris Goodwin Now Lincoln had to choose his cabinet. Bates, Seward, and Chase were the primary candidates. The most respectable place was given to Seward, whom Lincoln nominated as Secretary of State. Then, he offered Bates the Attorney Generalship. Bates accepted the offer nobly, saying that he couldn't concentrate on his family alone anymore, since the country was polarized. Now, the new president needed to get Chase into the cabinet. He offered him the Secretary of the Treasury role. However, Chase declined the nomination because he didn't want to be a subordinate. He expressed willingness to support Lincoln, but not as the Secretary of the Treasury. However, Lincoln did his best to convince Chase, and he eventually agreed. Having friends who can help you in complex situations is good, but you should always be capable of helping yourself. Key Point 4 The struggle for beliefs turned into a war. What else made Lincoln such a remarkable man? Shortly after becoming president, he visited Philadelphia to give a speech about freedom. He mentioned the Declaration of Independence, adopted in 1776, ensuring equality for all Americans. However, slavery still existed and was incompatible with statements in the Declaration. Enslaved individuals were frustrated, and Lincoln considered that truth was on their side. He claimed that the Declaration gave hope that Americans would finally be equal in their rights. He said he would be the happiest man in the world if this could happen. But if it couldn't, he would rather be killed than give up the Declaration's principles. This mention of the assassination was not a coincidence. Lincoln's detective and guardian, Alan Pinkerton, discovered a nefarious plot and asked the president to leave Philadelphia. Lincoln declined citing his responsibilities to help others. As such, Lincoln demonstrated his belief in his political course. In 1861, the rivalry between the South and North intensified, and the Civil War began. The Southern states, which heavily depended on slavery, didn't want to accept the North's or the Union's anti-slavery agenda. As such, they united to form the Confederate States of America. The North's opposition took Kentucky, North Carolina, Tennessee, and Virginia. The Confederates were especially satisfied with taking Virginia because it was one of the wealthiest states. Washington, D.C., the Union's strategic place, was isolated from the other northern states. The Confederates cut all wires responsible for communication, and citizens panicked because the city felt vulnerable. During the war, Lincoln lost his son, William, to typhoid fever, caused by the contamination of Washington's Potomac River, where troops disposed of their waste. Mary, Lincoln's wife, couldn't make peace with her son's death and aimed to communicate with his soul. She organized several spiritual seances in the White House to reach out to her son. Such hard times for the country made people search for reconciliation. Those in the public eye also suffer tremendous losses during a war. 
However, they need to stay resilient and continue working for victory. Did you know? Lincoln believed that deceased people continue to live as long as we remember them. Key point five. Steps to victory. Lincoln considered it crucial to visit the troops outside Washington to lift their spirits. He started his trip to Virginia on June 20th, 1864, heading for a meeting with his top general, Ulysses Grant, to whom he transferred the supreme command over the North's army. Lincoln expressed a profound appreciation of Grant's strategy that allowed the Union to regain locations occupied by the Confederates. In August, the Union's army managed to win back Atlanta. Lincoln requested 100 guns to fire in Washington and other cities to honor his men's victory and efforts. The public rejoiced. This win gave great hope that the war would end in their favor. Meanwhile, a new presidential election had come, and Democrats nominated General McClellan as their candidate. Lincoln had to win the election to complete his core goal to bring freedom to enslaved people. His agenda was the best for the country, but not everyone recognized its importance. The Democrats believed that McClellan would win, but Lincoln had another opinion. He was on good terms with the soldiers. When they lost a battle, he went to cheer them up, joining the wounded and shaking their hands, wishing them a quick recovery. Lincoln had an exceptional sense of humor and told funny stories that passed by word of mouth. He appreciated that they risked their lives for the greater good. Lincoln was right in his anticipation. The soldiers gave him the majority of votes, 8 out of 10, and Lincoln won his second election. Over the years, Lincoln had inspired an almost mystical devotion among his troops. Doris Goodwin In January 1865, the president was worried about enacting the 13th Amendment, prohibiting slavery. He was worried the Confederates might come to Washington to sabotage the bill. Luckily, the amendment passed with 119 votes in favor and 56 opposed, and a cheer disrupted the initial silence. Fight to the last for your beliefs, especially if they benefit humanity. Key Point 6 Lincoln's Assassination Lincoln aimed to end the war as soon as possible before thousands more died. However, there was one more problem. He offered monetary compensation to the enslaved people. Unfortunately, not all members of Congress accepted this idea. Due to some unanimous threats, politicians thought Lincoln's attempts to establish peace might result in his assault. Senator William Fessenden believed it wouldn't be possible to consider paying any compensation until the war ended. Too many resources were already allocated to the army, and it might be devastating to contribute even more. At the beginning of April 1865, the Union's forces invaded Petersburg, Virginia. Grant took 12,000 prisoners and displaced the Confederates from the city. Not long after, General Godfrey Weitzel won Richmond, Virginia. But Seward started worrying about Lincoln's safety since the Union was close to victory. He believed the Confederates would probably attempt to kill the president after their defeat. On April 4th, 1865, Lincoln arrived at Richmond and witnessed the consequences of the battle. Wreckage, horses, corpses, and torpedoes were scattered around the harbor. Formerly enslaved people were falling on their knees to honor their liberators. They called him Messiah, but known for his modesty, Lincoln asked them to thank only God for their emancipation. Modesty is admirable, since it keeps people on an equal footing. Lincoln didn't perceive the losses as a rigorous military man would. He grieved for every soldier and wished for the war to end soon. On April 9, 1865, the Confederates admitted defeat, ending the war. Grant arrived in Washington on April 13th. The Union wanted to honor him with a celebration. Lincoln's family rejoiced because the cruelty and losses had finally ceased. On April 14, 1865, Grant came to the White House to discuss new laws for the southern states. Lincoln's wife recalled that her husband was exceptionally cheerful that day, but John Wilkes Booth, a stage actor, had other plans. Lincoln's, Seward's, and Vice President Johnson's assassinations. He attacked Seward at his house but didn't murder him. The assassination of Johnson didn't take place. 
Lincoln suffered the most tragic fate. Wilkes killed Lincoln in the theater with one shot to the back of his head. The nation grieved for the president, recalling the many great things he did for his country and people. Conclusion Anti-slavery became rather popular in the Republican Party, but would any of its members struggle for the enslaved people's liberation as persistently and selflessly as the 16th president? Lincoln was indeed the embodiment of greatness. He won the election because of his modesty, mild character, and principles. He wasn't the kind of person who would speak negatively about his rivals to seem better at their expense. Lincoln always saw the best in people and built a formidable team, ready to fight on his side. He asked Seward, Chase, and Bates to become his cabinet members because he recognized their professionalism and power. Lincoln had a special bond with Seward, who frequently worried about his well-being and attempted to help. When the South and North fell apart, Lincoln realized that anti-slavery in America was becoming a much more challenging course to follow. The Confederacy and the Union were involved in what historians consider one of the cruelest conflicts in the U.S. But Lincoln's approach led to victory in American social development. Enslaved people were finally liberated in action, not just in words. They remembered Lincoln's modesty and were extremely grateful for his determination to protect them. Unfortunately, cruelty and the inability to recognize right and wrong resulted in Lincoln's assassination. The president remains one of the noblest politicians in American history. Try this. Read up on some famous political figures. See what you can learn from their experiences. Watch the documentary, Lincoln, to see how the president behaved. The actors skillfully convey specific characteristics of the people who lived in the 19th century.